Hello, it's cooking time. So, it's breakfast and I've used up all the eggs and I forgot to buy some yesterday. So I'm gonna use up leftovers from yesterday's dinner to do today's breakfast. So, clover garlic, mushrooms, cherry, mo cherry tomatoes, mozzarella and basil oil. So who knows? Spinach, a bit of cured meat, chorizo and salami, bread. Pan, pan, and we're gonna make like a cool little thing on toast. Do you know what, actually, funny story, when I was in Australia the first time, sorry, when I was in Australia the second time, we had a, vid a videographer with us called Julian. He was a lovely guy and uh, I really enjoyed him, you know, coming along with us and videoing stuff. And whilst we were in a hotel in, Brisbane, no Melbourne it was, um, we did, <laughs> we recorded a little segment called Lewis Watson, Chef Bastard, <laughs> and it was just me cooking a breakfast, it's on one of the like Australia diary, uh, you know, video diaries, but um, but we had to take out Lewis Watson, Chef Bastard, which I thought it was like my most genius moment ever, but nobody else liked it. So I'm bringing it back, this is Lewis Watson. Chef bastard. Okay, so the thing that takes the longest. Longest. Okay, so the thing that takes the longest. Okay, so the things that take the longest are the mushrooms. So what I'm going to do is just chop up this garlic, crush and chop. Chuck it in uh, a pan with some butter on a very low heat and then chop the mushrooms to you know uniform pieces and then chuck those in as well and just leave them to, I uh, don't even know the term, cook. Now I don't mind big chunks of garlic, I love garlic so I'm just going to chuck this in um, straight away. Do the butter first. Garlic in. Get in there. Right, time to chop the mushrooms. Or are they already chopped? Mm. So whilst that's going on in there, I'm just gonna chop some mushrooms. Doesn't matter how big, really, again. Usually with cooking, it's good to have them uh, in a uniform size, but never mind. Fun fact, I actually really wanted to be a chef when I was younger. I used to watch all the cookery programs. Yeah, I guess I am a chef, I just cook sick beets and uh, add a dash of fantastic guitar playing and then a little sprinkle of shouting. <laughs> that's good enough for me, I'm a big mushroom fan but that's good enough for me. Oh yeah, and the keen eyes amongst you may realise that the garlic's still here. I haven't put that on yet, but I didn't want to move this camera for continuity. So I've kept it here to chop that, and then I'm going to move the camera, and then chuck the garlic in, and just wait for uh, for that to sweat. I don't know, is that the word? Sweaty garlic. Mm. Mushrooms. And actually, disclaimer, I've never cooked this before in my life, so it could be the most awful piece of culinary shit ever. But who knows, eh? Fingers crossed. Okay, whilst the mushrooms are doing their thing, you might not be able to hear me over the mushrooms. Whilst the mushrooms are doing their thing, I'm going to stick the cured meat on here, um, on a low heat. I'm just gonna chop it up finely. Um, 
they're like full of fat, so you don't need any oil or anything. Uh, basically, the end goal is I'm gonna cook the cured meats in here, um, and then basically just chuck everything into this pan with the spinach, have it wilt, and then stick that on some toast. So let's chop the meat. Okay, we've got some chorizo and we've got salami here. I'm just gonna basically just just chop this up. Oh, this is gonna be a meaty treat. Just slap that into the pan. Just messed up that time lapse because I moved the camera on it. I'm just going to bung the spinach right on top of the pan and it will wilt. Added just a teeny bit of soy sauce as well because why not? Almost. Oh, for brunch. Actually, wait. Brunch. Review of breakfast. Pretty amazing. Um, I'm aware that people probably won't like that tutorial as much as uh, the grilled cheese thing because with the grilled cheese thing I was an idiot and 17 years old or whatever <laughs> and, and um, yeah just I don't know if you can hear that but there's building going on everywhere near our house. Next door uh, there They've knocked down an extension and then they're rebuilding an extension as well as gutting the house. Um, and you know, like for a while, it would be, you know, like half eight. Well, I think, I think they could start at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock on the dock. <clears throat> like right up against that wall, which is where the neighbor's house is. Um, and now this is somewhere else, like, and then they're still building this extension, but it's not them. Somewhere else, building everywhere. Which is, um, well, I don't care, I don't know why I'm ranting about it. Build more. If anything, people should be building more. <laughs> um, yeah, so th this is, that thingy probably isn't as uh, entertaining as most people would like it to be but I refuse to embarrass myself <laughs> that much again let's pick up here um, will you work and then oh I can't tell that's in focus I need do you know what? that's nice for framing I need uh, one of those fancy lenses that auto focuses or that actually it might be the camera that does that I don't know I'm also peeling up um, yes, yeah, so I've been in this chair for like the last two days, which is, I just feel a bit lazy, but um, at the same time, it, it's quite nice to just relax. Um, Wednesday, I'm going in with my good friend Rich to continue mixing the album, and honestly, I think we'll get really close to finishing it on Wednesday, so I'm really excited about that. Today, Big Soap's coming over after work. It's Friday, Freitag. Um, this morning, so I woke up at about five this morning, jet lag, um, and at about a quarter to eight, I think Coldplay built their new track on Radio 2, um, and it's a banger. 
Because fuck it, it's brilliant. I don't. I never understood why people hate Coldplay. I think it's the whole. Uh, a good friend. In fact, it was Rich who told me um, when we first, when I first worked with him. Geez, which was three years ago now. He said to me that everybody likes you until everybody likes you. And I think that that is a very, very good um, well, it's not an outlook, is it? It's a very good, it's not really a saying because only two people have said it. <laughs> it's a very good observation. It's a very good observation because uh, I think that they were just everywhere and everybody enjoyed them and because of that, people then started to dislike them. It actually sounds weird in my head, but it makes sense to me. Um, so they released a new song, so that'll probably be the track of the vlog today. Uh, I won't be able to replicate it on my guitar because they've used it as a massive production um, <laughs> and it's Chris Martin. Uh, I've tried doing his voice before and it's nigh on impossible. <laughs> um, so yeah, what's the plan today? Call of Duty came out, so I've kind of blanked out the day just to play Call of Duty. Um, although, I did want to... Uh, I've got a call with... I don't have my watch. A call with manager Matt um, later today to discuss some exciting things um, regarding potential music release. Uh, and ideas on how to do it. I've had, so, something that I've had with this record that I, I didn't have with the last one because it was my first record and I was... Amber on J. Hi mate. Yeah, I'm not bad, thank you, how are you? Thanks, man. Ah, oh, cheers. Thank you. You don't have to watch the vlogs. You're actually currently on the vlog right now. Let me put you on speaker. Say a, say a few words, mate. Don't be shy. What? Alright, oh, okay. Hey, yeah. <laughs> That's enough, mate. That's enough. It's my vlog. Get off the limelight. <laughs> Joe. Joe. Who is Joe? Oh, Joe Kier. Alright. Yeah. Uh, hung up anyway. I hate when the signal goes when you're calling somebody. Everything feels so unfinished, you know. Don't like it. Don't like it. Lovely to talk to Joe though. What a dude. What a dude. Right, I just, I forgot what I was talking about earlier before Joe rang, so forget that. Um, I <laughs> I need to take my dad to the station. He's got some meetings meetings in London today. Um, oh, there's a guy on my roof. Um, so yeah, I'll be right back when I've done that. Okay, so, that's Dad at the station, which means that now I have a free house. Listen, balloons! Nothing. Um, which is great for me, because my parents... Oh, oh, so my parents work from home, right, which is great because they're here all the time and my dad and my stepmom are amazing. Um, it's great to see them every day and make them cups of tea and you know whatever it's 
there are a lot of pros to it and, and it saves them going into the office every day as well, which is great. Uh, they've worked hard enough to get to this position and now they get to, you know, bathe in the staying at homeness. <laughs> the cool liquid of staying at home. Um, but it means that I can't make no I I can make noise and I know they wouldn't mind, but I I want to you know like I want to write and I want to shout songs and I, and and it is it is tough because I don't want to disturb their work day of course but also uh, there's a certain level of like embarrassment that comes with it you know when I'm writing but the way that I write people often write people often ask how do you write songs Lewis I love you so much and I think you're the best thing in the world and you know I think that you deserve just a tenor every day you know someone just gives you a tenor I think that's right I'm just quoting here um, you know I, I think that's ridiculous a shit joke a fucking shit joke Lewis. people often ask how do you write songs and they say you know do you do music first do you do the lyrics first and I think that a lot of that is situational you know there have been times where I've been on the train and the lyrics just popped to me um, and so I've written it down and then I write a song around that lyric um, but a lot of the time I'll do the music first I'll sit down and, and I'll just be playing on the guitar or whatever and I'll come up with something and and, I, and then all I do I'll say is just mumble words that's all I do really and, and and sometimes, you now what I'm doing really is searching for the melody, um, because I just I mumble melodies, and if something uh, you know is pleasing to my ears, I think, yeah, that's lovely, amazing, and then I start trying to write lyrics. But the the good thing about mumbling words rather than just doing like do 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 or whatever, you know, singing la la la, uh, it it means that sometimes you find a word, or sometimes a word just keeps coming up, you know, like. Um, I think it was with my song Ghost. I I was just playing around. Oh, where is where is it? I think it's here. I was just playing this. I was just playing around with it and, and something that just kept coming back to me was the word ghost and um, and it just it just clicked for me and then I just suddenly thought yeah it's great how can I write a song around the word ghost and and also I, I started then because I got ghost you know and just like a ghost I then started singing who will I vote by unnoticed and I was like, yeah, this is lovely. You know, a, a, go a ghost is, you know, if they exist, a ghost is rumoured to float and, and you know, people can't see them. That's great. And then I thought, okay, well, how can I tie that into something that I've experienced? And I think, yeah, you know, maybe that time that I put all of that effort in, into making somebody feel, you know, as, as good as possible and, and, and it was taxing on me, but, you know, it was, it was something that I... I'd done and, and I felt that I got nothing in return and I, and I felt like a ghost to that person and then I start building the words from there and so I think that's how I write songs but the thing is that with people here and, and I'm just mumbling you know if, if someone was to walk past and I think with my songs as well uh, the the place where my vocal feels most comfortable to me is when I'm a bit more shouty and stuff and that's why a song like uh, you know ah just got a click in my hand that was really weird and it really hurt. A song like Think or Swim. That to me is a comfortable range. You know, and, and so I can't do that quite. I'm mean, Think or Swim. I could do it quietly, but then I'm more conscious about the volume that I'm singing rather than the lyrics and the melody that I'm creating and, and so I don't like to do it on people at home. It's just such a long way of explaining why I love having a free house. So as soon as as soon as soon my parents leave, at the moment my stepmom's in Detroit, um, well in Michigan, 
back uh, at her home sorting out some uh, some family stuff which she couldn't do from over the Atlantic and my dad has just gone to the office and just taken him there so you know whenever I get opportunities like this which isn't that often which is fine you know I'm completely fine with that. I'm not complaining um, I like to cram in as much writing as possible now sometimes it's a good thing because I can come out with three songs that you know are okay or I can come out with one song that I'm really excited about but sometimes it's a negative thing as well because I start getting frustrated because I think oh god well They'll be home in two hours and, and I haven't got anything and what a waste of a day kind of thing. Um, when it, it's never really a waste of a day because any time that I spend writing is productive. You know, even if I come out the other end and, and hate the song, it's something that, you know, I can, um, it's, it's a productive experience because that song could be used by somebody else or I can use a, some lyrics from that song or the chorus from that song it's, it's always productive and I think that that's some, the, the key thing about songwriting even if you don't write you know you should never expect to write the best song in the world ever because it won't happen it, it won't you know there's always a better song out there it probably the better song probably won't mean as much to you as, as your song which is that's I'm all about writing songs that mean stuff to me you know and it might not be the best song but to me it's the best song that describes that feeling that I felt and and it's very therapeutic to write a song that I could then look back on and feel like yeah you know I, that was exactly how I felt and I've captured that moment I've captured that captured that emotion into this song this three minute three and a half minute song that you know it's, it's a it's a relief for me and so I'm not I'm never looking for the best song ever but there are some songwriters that do and, and all power to them you know that's amazing but even if you don't write that you know the best song just writing anything and I think that the key is finishing songs you know I a lot of the time I get halfway through a song and, and I really dislike it but I force myself to finish the song because that in itself is is the practice it's like you know I want to get better at songwriting so I'll keep writing it's if you want to get better at run, if you want to run a marathon you wouldn't run uh, you know you wouldn't say okay I'm gonna run 2k today which is the you know the analogy of finishing a song and getting to 500 meters and being like ah, actually no no I don't like this because then you haven't completed your goal and you, and you won't get better doing that you know writing a verse is great but finishing the song is, is the the uh, the real um, task here you know and that's the real practice of doing that nobody has to hear that song I've got hundreds of songs that nobody else has ever heard because I don't I don't want them to that you know there's they're songs that I, I don't feel showcased you know where I put myself as a songwriter or I they're completely different you know maybe I've written like a garage song or a, or a song for a kind of alternative rock d punk band or whatever and I just haven't you know it's not me but I think it's completing those songs has helped me become a better songwriter and I'm not saying that in the way that I'm the best songwriter ever, but you know, four years ago I was a lot worse at songwriting than than I am now, um, and I, you know, just it's the same way. If you use a running analogy again. If I started running four years ago, <laughs> which probably would have been a good idea, then now I'd be very fit. But actually, pretty shit analogy. Anyway, I'm gonna write some songs. Um, so this might be the end of the vlog. You've got the cooking thing. I had a phone call with Joe. I'm gonna play Call of Duty after this. And then Big Soap comes over. So maybe this is the end. I don't know. Who knows? Who, well, you'll know because it'll either say thanks for watching, you know, you're a gem, or not. It'll go to the next clip. Anyway, see ya.